Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to my course aspects of biochemical engineering. Now in the last lecture I was discussing about the activated sludge process, uh, how uh, activated sludge process basically it is a CSTR with cell mass recycling. Now activated sludge process is mostly used for the waste water treatment process and I, I described in the last class that, <coughs> that industrial more than uh, 70 percent of wastewater treatment process that is uh, controlled by the biological means. And there is a survey <coughs> made by Central Pollution Control Board in India and they observe that mostly the chemical and biochemical industry that we have in India that pose the waste that uh, water pollution problem. So, <coughs> so you know that now if you if you look at the chemical and biochemical industry, the waste water mostly contain the organic material, <coughs> the soluble organic material and this soluble organic material when we discharge in the water courses, the whatever bacteria is there, they will grow and multiply and, and contaminated the water. And not only that, the, they secrete different metabolites that causes some toxic effect in the water. <coughs> so, to safeguard this process, we shall have to do the uh, wastewater treatment process and most of the chemical and biochemical industry, they adopt this activated sludge process. Now, now if you look at why <coughs> this uh, biological process is mostly used for wastewater treatment process, the reason is that if you, if you want to oxidize chemically, we shall have to use the potassium dichromate, potassium permanganate and you have to you have to boil with uh, with uh, some time so that you know whatever organic inorganic material is there that will be totally oxidized but but when you do so that uh, waste water also in other way increases the heavy metal contamination as for example if you treat with potassium dichromate solution the chromium concentration of the water that in increases if you treat with uh, potassium permanganate the manganese ion concentration in the water that increases. So, metal ion, heavy metal ion contamination, this is another problem that we will be, uh, we'll be facing. So, to safeguard this situation, biological process has, has, uh, has uh, some kind of alternative. The, the reason is that your bacteria can utilize the soluble organics very easily and convert it into the cell mass. And then I, I try to discuss with respect to carbon balance, if you do the carbon balance of the system, we find that 50 percent of the carbon usually goes for the cell mass formation and 50 percent to carbon dioxide. Now, carbon dioxide that will go into air, but whatever that uh, uh, cell mass, 50 percent of carbon converted into cell mass and which is insoluble mass and we can easily separate it out. So, we can, <coughs> we can separate out is easily and I try to discuss that one key organism that is mostly used for activated sludge process is Joglia remigera because they secrete the polysaccharide gel and we know that the size of the bacterial cells is very small, it is 0.5 to 2 microns and since the size is very small, it is very difficult to, uh, to, uh, to separate out because and, uh, and, and since uh, this Joglia remigera has the characteristics of secreting the polysaccharide gel they have the agglomeration property, the particle they will bind with each other and form the flock that is the, <coughs> the bigger particle. When it forms the bigger, bigger particle, they will precipitate it out. And uh, so, you know that activated sludge process, we uh, is basically as I told you, it is basically CSTR with cell mass recycling. And if you look at in this uh, process, because I tried to discuss previously also, the major drawback of the chemostat process or CSTR process is the cell mass wasting from the reactor. And if your rate of cell mass that is going out of the reactor is more as compared to uh, the cell mass growing in the reactor, so a time will come there should be 
no no cell present in the reactor. If then there is no cell present in the reactor, so we will not get any kind of reaction. To, to avoid this kind of situation, what we can do? The whatever excess amount of cell mass that is going out of the reactor, we can recycle back to the system. So, the cell mass concentration in the reactor will be uniform and rate of reaction will be constant. So, our process we can operate very easily. So, this is the activated sludge process I tried to discuss and we, de we, we develop kind of, kind of equation through which we can find out the cell mass concentration in the in the activated sludge process also the volume of the reactor how you can calculate. Now, when you do the recycling of the cells I told you the main purpose is to increase the mean cell residence time. In case of chemostat process the mean cell residence time is equal to hydraulic retention time. So, as soon as you recycle the cells the mean cell residence time should be higher as compared to uh, that hydraulic retention time. So, to, so they again we, we try to discuss the the effectiveness uh, how uh, the sludge settling property can be expressed with the help of sludge volume index. And uh, now today uh, I want to discuss uh, two numerical problems on this particular uh, activated sludge process. And first problem we will discuss the process design. And this process design we can not only uh, we know that most of the biochemical processes they are aerobic, aerobic fermentation process. And aerobic fermentation process major bottlenecks is the dissolved oxygen concentration because why? Because microorganism they can utilize the oxygen which is dissolved in the fermentation media. So, the, and since uh, oxygen is sparingly soluble in in, in water. So, that is the major limiting factor in the aerobic fermentation process. So, since activated sludge process is the aerobic fermentation process, we can extrapolate this process design for normal biochemical fermentation process also. And, and in the next lecture, I shall discuss the anaerobic fermentation process. So, we can also we, we find out how the how we can design the anaerobic digester. So, let me start uh, this today that with the activated sludge process. Now, if you look at problem that we have here, this is if you see that uh, design of a continuous flow start tank uh, activated sludge process to treat 0.25 cubic meter per second of settled wastewater. Settled wastewater I try to discuss that when wastewater comes to the uh, that suppose this is activated sludge process when it comes first is uh, comes to the primary clarifier. Primary clarifier the main purpose is to separate out the suspended particles then it goes to the activated sludge process then again it goes to the secondary clarifier finally, it goes out like this and suspended solid we can separate out here. So, this is exactly what is mentioned the design a continuous flow start tank activated sludge process to treat 0.25 cubic meter per second of settled waste water having COD uh, BOD 5 is 250 milligram per liter. Effluent has 20 milligram per liter of BOD 5 or less. Assume the temperature is uh, 20 degree centigrade that the following conditions are applicable. The influent volatile suspended solid in the reactor is negligible. So, uh, I told you the volatile suspended solid actually in the, that indicate the presence of cell mass because most of the uh, cell mass they are organic mass. So, here we can assume the x 0 equal to 0 and MLBS by MLSS is 0.8 I, I explained in the last lecture. MLBSS means organic uh, that cell mass and MLSS is the total suspended solid and suspended solid comprises of uh, both the organic and inorganic mater material. Inorganic material we consider as the inactive biomass. Now, XCU is the settled cell mass concentration, but this is suspended solid. So, this is not a exactly the cell mass concentration, but if you multiply it with 0.8 then we will get, get the settled cell mass concentration. And this is MLVS that is the cell mass concentration x equal to 3500 milligram per liter. Theta c is the solid retention time or mean cell residence time that is 10 days hydraulic rhythm of the reactor is continuous flow start tank. Uh, the, this thing is very important because the effluent contains 20 
two milligram of biological solid in of which uh, of which the 65 percent biodegradable. Now, I want to tell you here suppose this is the activated sludge process and this is the CSTR and here here you have a starter and here you have the sedimentation tank you recycle back to the reactor. The supernatant is uh, this is actually the uh, this is called influent this is called influent and this is called effluent am I right. So, here x 0 equal to 0 and here x c we also this tends to 0 this is also tends to 0 that is we usually assume because we assume that the very less amount of cell mass present, but here here the problem is like this they are saying that effluent content 22 milligram per liter of suspended biological solid. That means, due to the inefficiency of the separator some solid material cell mass may overflow and is comes with the effluent. Uh, say 65 percent the value of BOD 5 can be obtained by multiplying BOD u by 0.68 waste contains adequate nitrogen phosphorus and other trace nutrient for biological growth and the specific death rate of the cell 0 0.06 day inverse and yield coefficient 0 0.5 one day sustained peak flow is to put 2.5 times the ever flow rate. The, this is the problem that we have now. Uh, so, what we shall have to do first? Uh, the process is like this: that you know, this is the this is the reactor, and we we pass the if the this the Q is the flow rate, Q zero is the flow rate, and S zero is the initial substrate concentration. X zero is the initial cell mass concentration. It comes in the reactor, and under steady state condition, the cell mass concentration is X. Uh, x and, and substrate concentration is this and v is the volume of the reactor. Then it comes to the clarifier or separator where we separate the cell mass and, and this is the settled cell mass concentration is x u it is it is it is recycled back to the uh, reactor like this and, and this is an effluent is coming out like this and this is the wasting uh, this uh, flow rate of the sludge and this is the settled cell. This is x r is given this will be x u we will be using the x u this is wrongly given. So, <coughs> now let us see how we can we can we can solve this problem. Now, here <coughs> Here that uh, um, uh, what is the what is the purpose of this activated sludge process? Purpose of the activated sludge process is to remove the soluble organics present in the wastewater. Now, how you can remove that your organism grow in the wastewater and convert the uh, soluble organics to insoluble organics and carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide will go out of the system and cell must remain in the system that we can easily separate it out. So, <coughs> so actually that uh, is due to the inefficiency of the clarifier we cannot separate all the cell mass. So, some cell mass remain with the effluent. So, that is not the fault of the activated sludge process. Now, if you if you want to calculate the actual efficiency of the activated sludge process, we shall have to consider the the BOD 5 of the soluble organics not the insoluble organics. So, the outgoing liquid has two part am I right? It has the soluble organics soluble plus insoluble. So, we shall we shall have to calculate what is the BOD 5 of the soluble and BOD 5 of the insoluble. Now, this is equal to the total BOD 5 of the effluent, BOD 5 of the effluent. Am I right? Now, now if you if you if you can find out BOD 5 of the insoluble uh, solid material, then if you deduct with total BOD 5 of the effluent, then we can find out BOD 5 of the soluble uh, uh, soluble liquid. So, this is exactly what we are doing here. You see that the effluent BOD 5 equal to BOD 5 of the soluble effluent, BOD 5 of the suspended solid. Now, now biodegradable portion of the effluent is uh, we have a 22 uh, milligram per liter of the biological solids of which the 65 percent is biodegradable. That means, biodegradable organic matter is 14.3 milligram per liter. Now, we know that for the oxidation of 1 gram of biomass we required 1.42 grams of oxygen. So, we can find out this how much oxygen will be required for oxidation of the solid material. And then BOD 5 of this material if you multiply it with 
six five because we have written in this problem beauty five is equal to point six eight into beauty u u u means that ultimate beauty the total beauty that we have so we can easily find out the beauty five of the suspended solid then we can we can find out the beauty five of the soluble effluent is twenty minus thirteen point eight that is six point two milligram per liter now when you uh, so when you when you talk about the process design the of any kind of biological process or chemical process first parameter we shall have to determine that what is the conversion efficiency of the process now here we have seen that we have two type of conversion efficiency one is overall plant efficiency and there is the biological efficiency of the process now if you look at the biological conversion efficiency of the process that will be what we, that is the beauty of the soluble incoming incoming liquid here is the 250 mg per liter beauty 5 and here is 6.2 mg per liter this, this is we have we have found out this by so uh, so biological conversion efficiency of the process will be 97.5 percent but overall plant efficiency if you consider so it is 250 and here 20 so <coughs> that means 250 minus 20 by 250 is coming 92 percent so this is how we can calculate the plant efficiency so when you do any kind of process design first parameter you shall have to monitor that is what is the conversion efficiency of the process second parameter we shall have to find out what is the volume of the reactor the volume of the reactor is like this and in this in this uh, i want to point out that these parameters particularly y x by s this 1 plus mu d plus theta c this is considered as y x by s observed observe means this is the we uh, we know the suspended material when we talk about the yield coefficient what is the overall yield coefficient gram of cell mass produced per gram of substrate consumed now this gram of cell mass when you go consider about overall yield coefficient it comprises of two type of biomass one is <coughs> one is called viable cell another we call dead cell now when you when cell multiplies on the only the viable cells will multiply dead cell will not multiply so uh, observed yield coefficient will be something else the observed yield coefficient we shall have to consider the date of the cells and it will come as y x by s y 1 plus mu mu d plus theta c equal to y x by s this observed yield coefficient now here this is the expression for the volume and we, we in this problem we have all the parameters you just put the parameters we can easily find out the volume of the reactor so second part of the the problem is that how to find out the volume of the reactor am i right so now next is that that what is the amount of solid produced per day from the reactor that we shall have to find out let us see how we can find out that i first i told you the y observed equal to y by 1 plus mu d plus theta c this is the observed yield coefficient and this is coming uh, you, i can i can tell you actually that we go overall <coughs> this overall yield coefficient was how much this is was 5 but when you consider the calculate the observed that the, the, the that is coming so it is much less than the overall yield coefficient because it comprises of both the dead cell and viable cells and it cons consists of mostly the viable cells so um, we can uh, so this is uh, uh, what is this parameter this parameter indicate q0 into s0 minus s indicate how much of bod that is removed so if you multiply it by this factor y observed we will easily get the how much cell mass is produced this is the cell mass is produced now once we know the how much cell mass is produced this is the volatile suspended solid now if you divide by 0.8 then we will got we will get the mixed liquor suspended solid that is the sludge so this is what we, we what we can calculate how much sludge is producing per day next is that volumetric the sludge wasting flow rate now how you can find out i i told you that in this reactor this is uh, this is like this this is coming in and and a part you are going out and part you recycling back now here you, you have q w x u uh, and s am i right and here you have what q w plus q r and q r is a recycle flow rate and here is the cell mass concentration now what is the 
and theta c theta c is the solid retention time. How you can write this is v is the v is the volume of the reactor x is the cell mass x v into x divided by q w into x u x u that is the how much rate of cell mass wasting from the reactor and this is the how much cell present in the reactor. So, that gives you the what is the solid retention time. Now, if in this equation we can easily find out q w, q w is the volumetric uh, sludge wasting rate. If you put all this value, we will get uh, 205.7 cubic meter per day. Now, next is that what is the recirculation ratio that we can easily find out recirculation ratio, we can find out uh, uh, that uh, this equation that uh, recirculation ratio usually we find out by alpha, this is this is alpha is equal to q ward by q 0. This is the recycle ratio, this is I think this, there is some mistake we can make the correction. Then uh, this we can find out through the material balance across the uh, reactor we can easily find out that uh, in the in the uh, then we can we can find out that uh, what will be the value of q ward by q 0. Now, hydraulic retention time uh, that is the uh, hydraulic retention theta can be easily find out V by Q 0 that is you can, you can easily find out then V we know then Q 0 you can know. So, we can find out the hydraulic retention time. Now, oxygen requirement we can easily calculate how you can ca calculate the Q into S 0 minus S that is the amount of beauty that is removed and, uh, and then this is point point uh, this is the beauty 5 and point 0.68 if you divide then we will get the total beauty that should be removed. Now, when your waste water this much of beauty is removed a part is, uh, is converting into cell mass that remain in the reactor. So, the BOD equivalent to cell mass that is to be deducted and BOD equivalent to this is the amount of cell mass that is produced and this is 1.42 is the conversion factor for the oxidation of 1 gram of uh, the, the cell you required 1.42 gram of oxygen. So, if you decide we can find out the figure that what is the exact, ex exact amount of oxygen that is required in this particular process. Now, the F, F by M ratio that uh, uh, also you can easily uh, calculate what is the F by M ratio. F by M ratio is the food and microorganism ratio. What is the food? Total food is the Q 0 into S 0 and what is the microorganism present in the reactor V into X. The, so, we can we can find here because Q F by F by Q 0 is the 1 by theta. So, this is the replaced by theta, theta is the hydraulic retention time. So, you can easily find out what is the F by V ratio and then volumetric loading that we can calculate by this, this is that uh, per unit volume how much BOD is loading that we can per unit time that we can calculate from this. Now, how you calculate the amount of air requirement that is very important because previously we have already find out how much oxygen is required. This is the amount of oxygen required. Now, air content 23.2 percent of uh, oxygen. So, if you divide by 0 0.232, you will get the amount of air that is required. Now, air has the density of 1.2021 uh, kg per cubic meter. So, you will get the volume of air that is required. Uh, for this particular process. Now, now, now all oxygen present in the uh, air, all, all oxygen we cannot be transferred into the uh, liquid. So, there is a, some kind of oxygen transfer efficiency that is we consider about 8 percent. So, if you divide by 0 0.08, we will get the exact amount of uh, oxygen that is uh, air that is required for this particular process. And for designing purpose, always we consider some kind of factor of safety. Here we can consider two as the factor of safety. We can find out that what <coughs> what should be the air requirement as about 333.36 cubic meter per minute. And here we can say air requirement per unit volume of the effluent. This is the amount of effluent is to be treated. This is the amount of air is required. So we can find out cubic meter per cubic meter of <coughs> that effluent that that, uh, that we can calculate. Air requirement per kg of beauty removal that also we can calculate 
with uh, very easily. So, if you know <coughs> that uh, this is the a amount of air requirement and this is the amount of uh, that uh, BOD that is to be removed and then we can find out for the per kg of BOD removal how much air is required. So, this is the, this is uh, this is considered as a process design. The process design basically we mean that for running for operation of the process whatever parameters we shall have to monitor that is to be estimated that is called process design. <coughs> now, second problem also very interesting if you look at that one step aeration activated sludge process is to be analyzed as a series of continuous uh, flow start tank reactor. Now, <coughs> this is the four, the four tanks this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 this is the activated sludge process they are uh, their continuous start tank reactor they are attached with each other in series. Now, then this is the clarifier uh, clarified uh, this is the clarifier where you separate out the cells and if cell you recycle back to the system. Now, if you look at the uh, flow diagram these cells it, it comes in contact with the with the flow stream that is the, the feed this is the uh, this is the feed or waste water that is coming in. So, they are mixing together and then they are equally distributed in the four different reactor am I right. You can see that this is distributed like this. So, then here the liquid is coming and then uh, after the presentation is uh, continuously operation then the liquid is entering into second reactor and here is coming and then this is. Now, here I want to point out one thing that if you look at the flow rate of the how much what, uh, what flow rate the, the incoming liquid coming in the first reactor that is f am I right. Now, in case of second reactor we have two flow rate here f and here f. So, overall flow rate is 2 f. So, here you have 2 f am I right. So, the, this in the third reactor this uh, what is the flow rate 2 f plus f that is 3 f. So, here it is coming 3 f am I right it is 3 f is entering and fourth reactor will be 3 f plus 4 f that is 4 f. So, this is the overall flow rate in the in the in the third fourth reactor. So, this is how let me see how how we can solve this problem and I told you that whenever you, you want to solve the problem you try to uh, write down all the operational parameters that we have you can write it down and now uh, let us see how we can find out the overall flow rate of individual tank. So, F 0 is the is the is the is the incoming flow rate am I right this is F 0 and this is F r this is here F 0 and F r and then it is divided into four different reactors like this equally it divided like this am I right. So, so basically it is F 0 by F r divided by 4. So, the flow rate of individual uh, reactor here it will be 300 cubic meter per day. Now, question question come what is the value of S? Now, here the S 0 value is the, is the substrate concentration S 0 and here substrate concentration is S am I right. Now, S 4 because it is coming from the fourth reactor. So, we can write F 0 into S S 0 plus F r into S 4 divided by F 4 F then we will get the this value that means 170 milligram per liter. So, S value you can find out similarly we can find out the value of X also what is coming in here X here X here X all this X value you can kind of F 0 into X 0 this is X 0 and here this is X u am I right. So, F r into X u divided by 4 f you calculate 3.3 grams per liter that we will be getting. Now, when we do the substrate balance in the first uh, reactor then how we can write the substrate balance is the rate of input of, in of the substrate rate of generation of substrate output consumption and accumulation. Now, this will be equal to 0 in case of substrate and uh, rate under steady state condition accumulation will be 0. So, we can write f into s s f into s 1 d s by d t into f. Now, d s d by d t we can write in this form. So, this uh, this uh, we can write in this form the f into s minus s 1 y x by s by v equal mu z into x 1. Now, if you go if you write the cell mass balance also we can we can we can come across this equation. So, 
this uh, for what is the what is the net growth of the cells is mu z into mu d the mu z is the growth of the cell mu d is the death of the cells into x1 this is equal to this now uh, this equation we can write in this form this is uh, and then from equation 1 and 2 if you look at this equation we have we have we have written in this form the mu mu g into x1 and this equation also we find out the expression for mu g so the one or two the that one side is the same so we can equilibrate the equation we will come across this equation and then the this equation you can write to find out the value of x1 and where our equation will come and x1 will be equal to uh, that f by d v is equal to what 1 by theta because we know theta is the hydraulic detention time is equal to v by f am i right so um, this we can write in this form y by x x this is uh, this is f by v i can take common and uh, this also we can take common and we can have 1 plus mu d into theta now then from this we can we can we can write a generalized equation that xn equal to uh, si in minus sn uh, y x by s plus x i divided by y 1 plus mu d plus theta n. Now, what do you mean by theta n? Theta n is the hydraulic retention time of the in tank, x i is the cell mass concentration of the incoming liquid, x n is the substrate concentration leaving the in tank and x, x s i is the substrate concentration of the incoming liquid, x n is the cell mass concentration of the nth reactor. So, so, what we can do that after writing this generalized equation, now we can consider the first reactor. In the first reactor, what we can write that x1 equal to this, uh, this s is, will be uh, that s that you know the, the reactor that s is coming this uh, with the main mainstream, the s minus s1, s1 is going out like from this, this is the number one reactor, I can, I can write that this is x. Uh, x is the, the here is the value of x that is the incoming liquid and 1 plus theta into uh, mu d into theta. So, if you put all these values we can find out the cell mass concentration here is like this. Now, similarly we can find out the, um, the si, si value and, uh, uh, and x i value and x 2 value that we can find out in the, 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 the in the second reactor. How we can find out in the second reactor? that in the second reactor if you if you consider in the second reactor suppose this is the mainstream and this is the first reactor this is the second reactor and this is coming like this so here there is the f is the flow rate this is f is the flow rate this is s1 this is s am i right so we can write the si uh, the incoming substrate concentration is the f into s plus f into s s1 divided by 2 f will give you 87 milligram per liter. Similarly, x i also we can calculate we find this. Now, theta theta 2 the hydraulic retention level this is the volume of the reaction the, the total flow rate is a plus f is 2 f. So, we can find out 0 0.4. So, the, if you put this value in the equation we can get the value of x 2. Now, similarly we, I can I can solve uh, the reactor 3 and reactor 4. Similarly, it is the same solution we can get and uh, and uh, so what i in 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 conclusion what i want to tell that uh, that uh, that in the uh, it is it is uh, very easy to uh, do the process design of activated sludge process we can find out first we shall have to find out the conversion efficiency of the process and then we shall have to find out the volume of the reactor then then we, shall, we can find out how much sludge is producing per unit time then we can calculate that uh, uh, that uh, uh, what is the hydraulic retention time, what is the solid retention time, what is the flow rate of, of wasting flow rate uh, of the of the sludge. Then we can find out the exact amount of air that is required for this particular activated sludge process. And I try to try to solve some kind of step aeration process just to find out that uh, how to uh, the cell concentration uh, in after different uh, reactors when they are um, they are connected in series thank you very much